Welcome back to Beards and Brews. Movie reviews, that is. Uh, tonight's movie is going to be Videodrome. Yes, James Woods. Dude, James Woods is awesome in this movie. He's the only reason why I kept watching, to be honest. All right. I'm glad we're all going to be out there. So if you're, you're out there in TV land, wow. Uh, James Woods, everybody. He is the world's best sleazy guy. I don't know what it is. I just love him. Just doing what he does. And what perfect guy to portray his character, who's a little, well, not a little bit, a lot of a scumbag. He's basically just running like a really violent whatever TV station in Toronto somewhere. I mean, a guy's got to make some money, right? You know what? You got a point. Like, I didn't hate him, but like, yeah, he's totally a dirtbag. <laughs> no, I could hang out with him. I don't know what you guys are talking about. We could be friends. Okay. Well, he starts out very business-ish. It's, you know, it's smut, but it's not smut that he's interested in. It's just smut that he knows will sell. Oh, even if you hate him, just be careful. He'll just start hitting on you for no reason. <laughs> I mean, it's not for no reason. She was kind of, you know, I mean, I would. Well, you know, blondie one way or another, am I right? Now, I didn't look it up, but I'm curious if those were her breasts. <laughs> if those were actual blondie boobs not to mention she's like 40 in this role and she looks good as fuck definitely the first time in my life that I've ever been attracted to Debbie Harry but boy was I well no need for stunt tits here guys she had that sultry I'm gonna smoke this cigarette with my shoulder pads a la fucking uh, Blade Runner and then she takes the shoulder pads off and just like burns her titty with a cigarette she does she does. Uh, Chandler, I think that might be your thing. Maybe you got like a smoke fetish or something. Like you're into, you know, sassy ladies with a cigarette. I mean, I could be into far weirder shit. Yeah, are, are you like a human ashtray and you're not telling us? <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> this pause is staying in, by the way. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was waiting for him to like fire back. He's been really witty tonight. Oh, no, I was just taking a sip of my beer. He's just like, maybe I am. <laughs> but uh, just real fast, um, this movie's about a gentleman, like I said earlier, who runs a TV station, shows a lot of smut, a lot of violent stuff, has a little bit of an outlet for people can, to indulge so they don't really have to go out into the world and fuck shit up. Or yeah, at least that's his excuse for it, right? I mean, money talks and bullshit walks, so. That, that's true. Uh, in the first few seconds, we get a shot of, like, this television screen thing to basically show you that no matter what he's sleeping with the TV on everything this man is overly stimulated they want you to know this from the get go and early on I wish I didn't figure the movie out that quickly but as soon as they said it verbatim I was like oh this is what this movie's about okay <laughs> yeah they, they make no qualms about just putting it in your face they put a lot of stuff in your face but how, how can you you know not like James Woods and titties. There are some titties. Uh, we start out with some photographs of some very artsy photographs of some uh, Japanese, I'm guessing, Japanese ladies. Uh, while he's going through, I guess, maybe trying to make a purchase of some smut, some Japanese smut, might be potential oh. on his program. Yeah, he's got them tasteful nudes like they did in Tombstone. But the dude who's selling him the pictures, his fucking accent is so harsh. I could barely understand him. Oh, yeah, he has this uh, that little meeting with the uh, Japanese investors or whatever. And they have yeah. this entire case. Like, apparently it's a huge storyline of just smut. And he's like, nah, give me the last one. That's all I need. And did anyone else catch one of the movies that they were trying to pitch? It was Samurai Dreams, which was like this lady who had like that... Uh, Russian nesting doll that was secretly a dildo. We should review that next week. <laughs> oh my god. Well, evidently that was still too soft. Uh, he dismissed it as having too much class. I like how that's classy, and when I was watching I was like, is that a dick? Yeah, it's a dick. <laughs> my favorite part about this scene, at least, was whenever he looks at one of the other, uh, I guess, chairman, whoever the fuck they are, he goes, can we get away with it? Should we get should away we? with it? Yeah. yeah, it's almost and, like the like the three monkeys with like the eyes, mouth, and ears or whatever. Like yes. one was really into it, one was unsure, and one was like, "I don't give a fuck. This sucks." Definitely. And then 
I don't know if you guys caught this, but James Wood and everyone around the table keeps saying the word something. Just they say the word something over and over in almost every sentence. And the entire time over James Wood's left shoulder, there is a poster of a film called Something. And I was like, is that and is this a real plug? Is there a movie called Something that I should be looking into? Is this another Cronenberg film that I'm maybe, not not maybe knowing? Maybe just of? Cronenberg trying to get in there subliminally. Yeah, about something. I don't, I don't know what his route <laughs> is, but I mean, maybe he's got it's, some. Maybe he's got more going on than I'm giving him credit for. Maybe he's just being like super Seinfeld. It's just it's nothing. The something is nothing, and even the something on the wall is just nothing. It's just all something, but or, also nothing. Or, maybe it's something. Let's look into that. Uh, we're introduced right after that to uh, one of James Wood's staff members, and I didn't bother to remember his name or anything like that because as soon what well, he's oh yeah he acts like he's Hispanic or something keeps saying cabron but he doesn't look Hispanic in any way shape or form he he's is like, dressed yeah. exactly like Burke. From aliens, like Paul Reiser's character. I yeah, like he uh, he has a lot of um, like Spanish slang, but he's vaguely Eastern European. I don't know. <laughs> he's Hispanic on the inside. He looks more like Bora. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a Spanish Vince Vaughn. <laughs> oh. So they're they're trying to figure out what they want to air on television. His TV channel airs all the dirty stuff. Uh, Burke from Aliens is able to tap into <laughs> some hidden pirate TV station where it's like snuff films, and that catches go- um, James Woods' attention. I don't, I don't, I'm not, I don't know his character's name. He's just going to be James Woods. Yeah, he. It's not yeah. none of these people's names fucking matters. This movie, it, it doesn't. None of this matters. <laughs> just, 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 I wrote yeah. down a, a couple of character names in this. Actually, I wrote down his name was Max. And there's Professor Brian Oblivion, and there's Debbie. Oh, yeah. Jeez, that fucking name. Oblivion, when I saw that, I was like, come on. <laughs> so after all the hubbub about um, this new show that they found on the Pirate Channel called Videodrome, he's very interested in it, but he doesn't quite have the material. In the middle of all this, he's invited to a talk show to talk about his channel, Civic TV, and why it's so violent and grotesque. Now... now- as soon as he gets there, he's like got a cigarette and he's packing it against what is a lighter. But when he's packing it, I'm like, what the fuck is that? Because it looks like a goddamn perfume bottle. I thought he was dipping the cigarette in like the perfume bottle. I was like, what is he doing? And then he lights it with this perfume bottle lighter. It's huge. I don't know. Maybe it's another Cronenberg thing. He's just like, whatever is he compensating for his smaller perfume bottle? <laughs> And that's when we're first introduced to uh, Blondie. <laughs> Who will just be referred to as Blondie. It's just Debbie Harry. But she's a brunette. Go figure. I'm into it. We know. Uh, she looks She looks amazing. She looks amazing in this role. Good for her. Blondie, I applaud you. And she's actually a really good actor. Like She was just fine. Like No complaints here. Oh, she's doing a great job like, with that sultry sleaze bag thing. Yeah, I don't know that I'd do, I'd go as far as say really good actor. I would say just fine. She was fine. What she needed to do, she did. Good job. And that was James Woods. So congratulations. Yeah. Eric, we'll, we'll get to that soon. This. this was like our favorite little bit that he's on this talk show. They're asking him questions. They're cross-referencing him with this Professor Oblivion quest or er, character. <laughs> as soon as they start talking. And James was no longer obligated to talk. He immediately and audibly during the interview begins hitting on Blondie's character. And not only does it cut off the orator, like the host of the show, but you can hear it the entire time as she's trying to interview Dr. Oblivion or whatever. It's, it's just right there in your right ear and the whole time. Hilarious. And you can see uh, the, the lady who's interviewing Dr. Oblivion keeps kind of shooting her eyes over at them to be like, hey, be quiet. But they just ignore her. You can knock it off. Yeah, and what's great about it is like even though he's just such a slime ball, and that happens when it cuts back, she's totally into it. He got it. Good for him. Whatever it worked. And that leads them to uh, heading back to his apartment where they watch some torture porn. 
and she asks him to take out his Swiss army knife and cut her. <laughs> yeah, she's super into the whole torture porn thing. Uh, it's it's a little weird, and I mean, honestly, I'm still into it. You know, whatever. You do. Yeah, you there's some spooning with acupuncture, and literally in my notes, I have uh, Swiss Army spooning with acupuncture. What the fuck am I watching? <laughs> I, I didn't know what the fuck I was hearing because whoever did the sound design for that scene when they're like poking through the ear, it sounded like somebody's eating a thing of pudding right into a microphone. It was oh, all disgusting. Just... <laughs> it's just... I'm like, that's not the sound that makes. <laughs> yeah, it totally sounds, I think, a bit more like this. <laughs> what? Was that your ass? Yes. <laughs> oh. Yes, it was. Uh, this one known the Sharton Room floor. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, there um, he pierces her her ear, and there's just blood, and she's still into it, and then they're mm. fucking, and I'm still into it. Well, he even checked her shoulder, and apparently there were like four or five marks there before, because you know, this ain't her first rodeo. That's right, four, maybe five suitors in a year, <laughs> dude. Whatever. This is like Fifty Shades of 1983. <laughs> oh, nice. They have sex in a red room, a literal red room with torture gear all around it, a clay wall for whatever, and then the floor looks like a George Foreman grill. Wait, so you gotta drain off all that fat. Yeah, I was just thinking, I was thinking maybe Fifty Shades of Grey straight stole that. I wouldn't uh, know because I've I've never seen it. Brady, do you have some explaining to do? Lucy, no, nah, Amber was super into it. She read the books and that got me a few months of some crazy shit, and then she watched the film and hated it. <laughs> <laughs> then it was like a couple months of cold shoulder and just like... <laughs> yeah, she's like, this film ruined my fucking vagina. I hate you now. Like, <laughs> that got me a few months of some crazy shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was, so, I was about 30, I think this is about 30 minutes into the movie, and fuck was I hating this film. I was like so over it already. I was like, Jesus Christ. See, me, I'm looking, I'm sitting here watching the movie. I'm like, what the fuck is this? I wonder what's next. Yeah, absolutely. Like, it usually takes me, like, I usually break it up between a couple of days watching these movies, but I was intrigued. I was like, please, tell me more. <laughs> See, I was completely the opposite. I was like, I don't, what? Just stop it. <laughs> like, tell me something, like, give me a fucking movie here that I can follow. I'm just confused. I just had, like, a bowl of popcorn. Just, oh, my. <laughs> That's like, what is happening? Yeah, they start talking about some snuff philosophy and shit. I was like, I don't know, man. I yeah, my wife and I are watching, uh, watching this, and she had seen it before, evidently, because my wife is into some weird shit also. But um, <laughs> she's just sitting over here like, yeah, this is this is what's happening. And I'm like, what the fuck is happening? Yeah, and then we go from them, you know, banging in the red room to him at some meeting to try to figure out where Videodrome is being broadcast from. Yeah, he has and... a lunch with, like, uh, an old lady who I guess is an agent for some of these groups that put out videos and well that that was shortly after they found out where it was coming from because they thought it was like oh it's coming from where the fuck ever and the guy yeah. was just like nah yeah. they're just bouncing off signal it's coming from somewhere more exotic pittsburgh pittsburgh and i know that wasn't the joke but man it was a good one <laughs> it's because pittsburgh's a joke whenever they're at that meeting did anyone else get a good look at that waiter i did um, He's a goofy looking motherfucker. <laughs> he was um he was kind of a pretty boy, but also kind of like a like a chinchilla. Yeah, he had three different hair colors. <laughs> oh jeez. Is this one of those things where Chandler's follows up with like I was into it? Wasn't into this. I will say wasn't into this. I'm into a lot of things. Wasn't into this. Oh, they look like the dudes here from Beetlejuice, they're like all skunked up and stuff. No, this dude looked like an organized calico cat. It was weird. No, I just wanted to feed him some vegetables or something. <laughs> Please, sustenance. But she, uh, during the meeting, she's like, you don't want to really follow this because this is a bit beyond your scope. This isn't TV. This shit's real. Then, like, she gives him, like, the little clue to the next bit. Instead of just yeah. telling him where, like, the guy is, like, oh, the only name you need to know is Oblivion. And then we're like... <laughs> That's, that's not even a good clue. Like, we just left that TV show. It's not even, like, enough for me to feel good about it. Yeah, it's like if I were like, oh, hey, Eric, I'll see you tomorrow. Hey, random lady, 
do you know where I could find this thing? All I can tell you is Eric. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm like five feet away. Hey, man. It was under your nerves the whole time. <laughs> but apparently Mr. Oblivion's lair is located in a homeless shelter. Yeah, that was really weird. Like, I, well, I mean, this whole movie's oh. kind of really weird. Well, but... Are they homeless? I don't think they're homeless. I think they're televisionless. Oh, yeah, that um, that one weird old guy was just like five inches away from the screen, just like looking, yeah, yeah. And then like James Wood peers over like the little cubicle and he just like looks up and smiles like a freak. Yeah, but the guy was walking, watching like a heart transplant video or something. Maybe he was just like a doctor living the good old days. I don't know. <laughs> it was fucking weird. I, I, this is all that you can say. Like this movie clearly has a gigantic cult following. I'm not one of them, but I can say I'm having a lot more fun t- talking about the film than I did. I didn't think it was bad or anything. I'm glad I watched it. It's something new. And it wasn't terrible, terrible. But man, we might have yeah. to talk about this later. Like, this movie kind of left me feeling empty. Yeah, this was weird and interesting. And I, I don't really know how I feel about it, but it, it was interesting and weird. But also interestingly weird. He makes it up to uh, Professor Oblivion's lair, guided by Professor Oblivion's daughter. And this Skyrim. dude's office, yeah, is like a Greek philosopher villain lair. <laughs> I thought there was going to be something weird because, like, or more weird, or maybe an explanation. Like, all the windows were completely covered. Like, I thought maybe he was, like, a shut-in, or, like, well, those dudes who can't do UV lights or whatever. So that's why he was on the television at the TV show. No, yeah. he's just, he's just dead. And he's, he's just, just dead, kinda, yeah. He's just dead. That's a twist, kind of. Is it? I guess. Eh. If that's What's a twist, twist for you, you've got... We've got some room to move here a little bit in the next few, uh, what, hour left? We've got a oh, lot yeah. more twists. I mean, the movie makes room, even if it's in James Wood's stomach. Yeah. So, James Wood's character's wardrobe in this scene and from now on Maybe before, it was just at this point in the film that I was like, man, he looks a lot like Lance Hendrickson in Pumpkinhead. Because I was just like, what the fuck is Ed Harley doing in there? Ed Harley, you're going to pay the price. And just, <laughs> I love how he says his name first, like a Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So fucking weird. And then did you catch the picture of ballerina Stilt Hitler? What? No, no. No? Yeah, there's totally like a fucking picture in the background of Hitler on on some stilts dressed like a ballerina. Hmm. Man, his artist days are crazy. (laughs) (laughs) So, during the whole conversation between um, Oblivion's daughter and everything, you learn a few things. A being, if you wind up viewing Videodrome, whether you want to or not, you kind of get a brain tumor. Oops, a daisy. It was so. a tumor. <laughs> what? That yeah, you cut out real bad right there. It was, uh, oh, and he was, <laughs> um, you know, rightfully just like angry about that. It was like, I didn't have a choice. Like, what the fuck? I don't need a tumor. It's kind of not my bag. But she goes on saying about, like, um, you know, you'll start to have, like, hallucinations. The the line between reality and television will start to blur more and more so. What Have you talked to your children about Videodrome? <laughs> Side this effects include brain. murder. This is your brain on Videodrome. <laughs> Starts smashing a fucking plate. <laughs> so it's about 42 minutes in here. And this is when it was really feeling fairly long to me. Uh, but this is also where I started to get into the film. This, yeah, is, this when, is where, to going. me, the movie starts. Uh, yeah. We get we get the weird hallucination of the veiny TV, and it's hungry for wood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was... Uh, I had seen that scene previously, trying to like cut up a trailer for this cast. And I was just like, what the fuck is this without context? And when I finally got to see it, I'm like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He was exposed to a radioactive VHS and became Tumor Man with the power to hallucinate. Oh, God. The power of stage five cancer. Oh. <laughs> but he's at his home and uh, he's got a gun there. And he's he obviously has no idea what he's looking at. 
Yeah. <laughs> He's just sitting like there shirtless with the shoulder holster. I was lost. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, they, they bring it up like a little before. Like he gets the gun out of the box. It's all wrapped up. Like did he used to be like a like a PI or something? Like why does he have this gun? Then I realized, oh, the movie just wants me to know he has a gun. So the rest of the movie kind of makes sense. <laughs> yeah. 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 Context. Context is important. I'm, I'm really excited to hear Chandler's take on this. His itchy scar. Which he scratches with his gun. Safety kids. With his finger on the trigger. <laughs> oh, are you talking about the chest vagina? I mentioned the chest vagina. Yeah. It's more like a body wallet. <laughs> <laughs> just in case you need a little extra storage space. Just a, an extra pocket. Yeah, his gut opens up and, you know, he can smuggle weapons across the border in that bitch. Just a little flash pocket, you know. But I'm going to say two things about this. Number one, when it happens, the special effects for this are top notch, uh, especially for 1983. They for look 1983, super cool. absolutely. They look super cool. His gut opens up. It really looks like he's reaching inside of himself. Super fucking cool scene. The second thing I wanted to say about it is I'm having a brain fart, so give me a moment. <laughs> it's a tumor. Yeah. It's a tumor. It's, oh, a tumor. Yeah. it's a tumor. So the second thing I want to say was it opens up and he doesn't seem too shocked by this. <laughs> well, well, given all the other weird stuff he's probably seen on his own TV channel, I mean, it's bound to happen. I'm just saying, if I look down on my fucking stomach, my from my sternum down to my navel was just opened. His I would abdomen. Go, I would oh, say his uh, abdomen. His abdominals. <laughs> Maybe he's just thinking hunger, get what hunger want, and just feeds it the gun. Yeah. Oh. So his I'm... abdomen cavity opens up, and he, for whatever reason, stick the gun inside of it, along with most of his hand, <laughs> and then <laughs> he did just the gun there. Firearm there. Yeah, yeah I, I realized that that's his first go-to when that happens. He's like, ah, okay, <laughs> that's it. It's just gone. Let me just put something in there for later. I might need Not even that. some triscuits or anything, just a fucking gun. You know, I gotta say, I think when the movie is more obscure and we're not, like, one way or the other about it, we end up joking a lot more about it. This feels chaotic, but it's very fun. It's it's Yeah, this movie is definitely more abstract, but it does have, like, an A and B, like a, a straight line. Oh, yeah. It's so, a straight line, but man, it's a weird straight line. So James Woods and his belly pussy are just walking down the street one day. <laughs> the chest with John. That's, where we're, that's just where we are in life. He leaves the gun in there and his tummy becomes normal again. And he's like, what? And he gets a knock on the door and it's time for him to go take a ride in a Cadillac. All the way to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Which, in context, I didn't realize until just now, it's all the way from Toronto, Canada, to Pittsburgh. That's a long-ass way. He well, does it in a night. <laughs> he just appears. And That's the magic I, of Pittsburgh, yeah. I can't imagine that has good gas mileage. He drives from Toronto to Pittsburgh, like you were saying, and he goes to a glasses store. Not, not like, you know, drinking glasses, optical lenses. Yeah, this is just like a wacky lens crafters or something. And the guy plugs his shop once he introduces himself, this other character who is like, hey, you've watched Videodrome, so I know that your brain is wrong, blah, 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 exposition. He says, I make glasses for the poor and missiles for NATO. Thank God for Mr. Barry Convex. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot that his name is just like relative to whatever he's selling. Because how so, else would you know what he was selling? Well, I mean, I don't want my manure guy to be hairy horse shit. You know, it's just weird. <laughs> <laughs> That's I like that. So this guy is basically telling James Woods that he knows he's hallucinating and he knows what Videodrome does, but he wants to record one of James Woods' hallucinations with this gigantic prototype Virtue Boy. <laughs> it's like a fucking steampunk VR helmet or something. Yeah, for real. Yeah. Like, all the youngins out there that don't know what Virtue Boy is, it's like Oculus Rift of the 80s. It's like Oculus Rift, but terrible. <laughs> so Everything's red. 
But yeah, he uh, he turns this ridiculous thing on. It's super ridiculous. It looks kind of silly. And he just leaves him in a dark room by himself. He's like, oh, uh, 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 later. I don't have to be here. I hope you don't mind. Yeah, I gotta I go. Guess. I can't. Uh, I got a thing. I'll be in the glasses guy. He's like, I'll see you later. Audience this looks laughter. like some S&M stuff. Mm-hmm. I, I can't cope with freaky stuff. Yeah. yeah. So James Wood sees his love interest, uh, Blondie, walk into the room, and then she immediately walks to his right, disappears, and becomes a television. Which is... I guess a woman thing. I don't know. It's really confusing. And he's suddenly in the red room and he's I rubbing just, TV. I just <laughs> think it's pretty normal at this point. Well, I know it's like they're trying to do this whole thing about symbolism and like, you know, overstimulation by television. But at this point he's taking like a nine tail whip and just like whipping the back of a television for the next five fucking minutes. And I'm just like, for real, it's a long scene of whipping and he's no Indiana Jones. But when you see the screen, it's actually uh, the, the old lady from before, right? Yeah, it does change. I didn't yeah. notice that. Okay, just making sure it wasn't me. Yeah, yeah I think it changes. Uh, yeah, I think it changes from uh, Debbie Harry to like his little like um, right hand lady who'd like deliver the tape, then to the old lady. Yeah, like I guess the, it's like some oversexualized, whatever that's supposed to mean. He's yeah, in weird, man. He's whipping her, and then he wakes up in bed to, you know, a bounding gag breakfast in bed scenario. Yeah, I thought it was going to be like the Godfather. It'd be like a horse head or something. something See? Gross. Nice. I put, uh, just like the Godfather, but she wasn't a horse. But she wasn't not a horse. <laughs> Those teeth, though. He wakes up, tears off the sheet, Sarah Jessica Parker. Joke ensues. Oh, <laughs> That's fine. Matthew Broderick will never know. <laughs> it's not like he has a career anyways. Oh. <laughs> Ferris Bueller's he was, career he was off. Ferris Bueller. See, we just all jumped to that. Not I mean, you can't. I fish guy. Hated this movie. It's going on the Dude, list. Look, oh. that scene is worthy the oh yeah. Bow, 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 bow. Chicka, chicka. Okay, so he finds this uh, the agent, the old lady agent, bound and gagged in his bed when he wakes up. And his immediate thought is, I've got to call Harlan. I need pictures. I need I need him to come here and take pictures <laughs> of what's in my bed uh, yeah. for and whatever reason. Then vaguely Eastern European man shows up. He's like, dude, it's like four in the morning. What do you want? And James Woods is all kinds of crazy. Go in my bedroom, take a look, take pictures. And the guy, understandably, is just like, whoa, dude. Like, what's his <laughs> end game here, <laughs> even? <laughs> yeah. Like, even if that lady's there and he's taking pictures of her bound, gagged, dead, in the bed, like, what's his plan? Like, here's Maybe. evidence of this potential murder that I didn't do, but I mean, this is evidence. So I guess I'm probably going to prison now. That's Burke from Aliens. You can't trust him. <laughs> That's not me, Mang. <laughs> wow. Well, well. uh, um, so pretty much he's like, yeah, leave me alone. Uh, I'll see you during office hours. Just don't call oh, me yeah. again. And uh, James Woods is like, meet me at the lab in an hour. And the guy, once more, un- is understandably like, no, I'm not your fucking patsy. I just work there. I'll see you at work hours. Then uh, I guess they meet up, and he wants to see the most recent video drone tape. There is no video drone. <sighs> twist. That's a twist. Man, it was, I was so shit stupid. that he was setting him up with, and basically seeding this guy to have the hallucinations because he was just a test subject because they wanted the channel, which feels like a public access channel. Like, they could have just got one. It's like PBSXXX. Yeah, PBXXX. I'd pay for that. Well, that's what he was trying to sell. That was his whole thing. Hmm. He's got a good idea. But um, this is where it kind of got, needless to say, weird. But he, I think at this point he becomes like a pseudo-assassin or whatever after he, he gets that meat tape. So the guy takes another VHS. This one looks like some kind of like T-bone steak. And yeah. he shoves Hashtag... it into James Wood's tummy. Hashtag meat tape. Yeah. 
speaking of shoving things into your tummy, Chan Man, what you drinking? Oh, <laughs> today I've got something uh, at least fitting in name for what we've got here. This is Dogfish Head's Super 8. It's a goza Ooh. from uh, Dogfish Head. They describe it as a sessionable goza with heroic fruits, quinoa, and uh, Hawaiian sea salt. It mm. is a tart, motherfucker, let me tell you. It's sour and salty, a little bit sweet. Um, it's all right, but it's something. God damn, That's like, it's something. I ain't gonna lie. That one you brought over uh, for Critters that was salty sweet, I fucking love that thing. I like a good sour, but this is this is some tart shit. Yeah. Hashtag tart shit. Tart shit. <laughs> So now that James Woods has become a uh, pseudo-assassin, he stumbles into the hall, once again reaches into his he pussy, and pulls out his placenta pistol. This thing is just the same old pistol, but it's covered in, like, goop. It looks almost like his finger has turned into a pickle or something. <laughs> it's really weird looking. Yeah. Like, in, like enter meat tape, exit meat gun. Yeah, yeah. kind of looks like a dick. A lot of like a dick. Yeah. Like a yeah. pickle dick. Pickle dick! <laughs> uh, the, the, the pistol itself pulls some weird Hellraiser shit and plugs into him by drilling into his skin. Yeah, at first I thought it was like uh, screws just getting mounted into his wrist. See, and then I realized that it might, like, I think it was like cables. It was. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. but, it drilled in. I was like, what the fuck is going on? And how impractical is that? Because now his gun can't recoil. He can't reload. But he can look super suspicious as he tries to smuggle it around the city. Also, yeah, he's just... All right, let me tuck this in. How is he going <laughs> to masturbate now? Life the stranger, bro. Yeah. It'll be weird for a while. He'll get it. What? He'll just reach into his tummy, pull out two ribs, and just, you know, suck himself off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Brian Warner, Marilyn Manson. Man's hurt. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> he's got to go and kill the people who run his channel. Yep, so he goes in to shoot up the boardroom, and he does that. He, he shoots up the boardroom at channel 83. Yeah, uh, there's some nice awkward. Canada Dry product placement in there while he's trying to escape. He's he does a sneaky thing where he's like, oh, they shot up everybody. Oh, it totally wasn't me. I'm wounded. Yeah, joke's but, on you. It was just my meat gun. How yeah. did no one suspect this fucking dude? There's three guys in the room. You you yeah. see three guys in the room. Pow, pow, pow. There's dead bodies. No one else comes out of the room except for James Wood. And she's like, it's not me. And they're like, oh, okay. It's just like a grassy knoll situation. Don't worry, guys. I got to figure yeah. it out. <laughs> totally yeah. didn't ask to expand upon who they were. It's just they, they, they shot us. He got away with it because he is Neo. He is the new flesh. <laughs> Long live the new flesh. But it was so funny. Like um, that lady was giving him all the benefit of the doubt, and he's just like slowly inching towards the window the whole time. She's like, "Wait, what are you doing?" And he's like, ah, "I gotta go. I just, hey. I'm just gonna do this." Hey. Yeah, <laughs> just kind of like slip like. He just slithers away. Yeah, he's going back to spectacular optical. Yeah. But that Jamaican guy, holy shit, what is it up with these bad accents? Like, this dude is clearly not Jamaican. And there's no reason for him to even be Jamaican. Like, he, that character could have been just as good if it, he just had, like, a New York accent or something. The yeah, guy's but from he, Brooklyn, you know? That works so just fine. So, over the top Jamaican, it's like rihanna in there he's like yeah man you be needing some new spectacles <laughs> rihanna is from barbados barbados man <laughs> under the sea you know he sounds just like the crab <laughs> but burke puts his meat in him <laughs> He's like, let me see your tummy. And he's like, no, I'm not ready. And he's like, let me see your tummy. And he's like, blah, 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 and it opens up and he sticks another fucking pork chop in there. It's like the opposite of Quaid from Total Rico. Oh, nice. Wait, can we go back to the uh, the Jamaican guy? Did anybody make a cool runnings joke yet? No, but you just did. Oh, okay. 
Rest in peace, right. John Candy. Mad love. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, Bert puts his meat in him and uh, <laughs> eats his hand via yeah, tummy. I've got a lot of what the fucks written through this page for my notes right now, so I'm not really sure what that what what happens aside from what the fuck. Like when he pulls his, I guess, hand out, it's like a perfect cylinder, and I didn't know what it was. Maybe it's like a bad effect or something. But the guy stumbles through a couple of rooms, ends up in a corner somewhere, and just fucking explodes. Yeah, yeah it looks like a like a. Um, yeah, uh, well, what am I, thinking of? I thought it was one of those old timey like World War One hand grenades that you had to like chuck with like the wooden yeah, handle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Other than that, but then why did just drop it? <laughs> Because I thought it ate his hand and then left something on. I was like, what the fuck is going on? But it didn't matter. Yeah, I, yeah, we're thinking about this too much. Cause yeah, he yeah, just like, stumbles Let's back. get rid of this character. We don't need him anymore. Just set him aside, let him blow up, and let's move on. It's like the screenwriter just tore that page in half, and at the bottom he just wrote, Big Bada Boom. Big Bada Boom. Can't wait for Big that. Bada. So he stumbles back, blows up. James Wood... Just steps through the now gaping hole in the wall like the Kool-Aid man. Like, nothing's happening. <laughs> oh, yeah! And there's, like, a little kid out there. And he's, like, running up to James Wood like it's exciting. And the mom's like, no, don't do that! <laughs> Just Don't look the James Woods right directly in the eye. Do not. I was in John Carpenter's Vampires. Punched. <laughs> Just... <laughs> But uh, from there, he goes straight to the source, I guess. He goes to that little eye glass convention so he yeah, can yeah. kill the boss. He's just the boss. That's all he is. He's the final boss of the movie. Yeah, I man. This is where I feel like they just started to rush because it got fucking weird and nonsensical. I really, yeah, it, how it do wraps, I even take notes on this? It wraps up in a hurry, so it's pretty tough, I'm sure. Yeah, it was kind of abruptly, like really abruptly. I did not know the movie was ending that quickly when it when it ended. Yeah, my my list of notes says this for the rest of it. Dude pulls a mix of Total Recall and The Thing. Next phase is going all the way. TV explodes guts, kills himself with placenta pistol. Thank God, awful movie. <laughs> <laughs> but pretty much what you get is uh, Max uh, James Woods goes into this. Convention center. Convention Shit. center. There's some kind of a production going on, and Barry Convex, the main bad guy, is on stage, and James Woods just uh, gives it to him with the flesh pistol. Yeah, and for some reason, the flesh pistol bullets make him melt and gurgle and break apart. It's fucking. It's a cool scene. It, like I said, a mix of the thing and Total Recall. The eyes are bulging. The skin's peeling away. Well, and what looks good. like General Tao's chicken just kind of like poking out of him. Yeah, just like... <laughs> Thank God the body is only the beginning. The beginning of the new flesh. Long live and the new flesh. Just to skip things ahead, he runs away off to some fucking corner somewhere on a boat, and he just offs himself. The end. Well, hold I... on now. No. <laughs> <laughs> on, on this random uh, boat this random deserted boat there's a television and uh debbie harry appears on this television and effectively tells him call me <laughs> uh to get to the new flesh you've got to kill the old flesh and all i can say is that must have been some real good pussy because he's trying to he's trying to nail that bitch in the afterlife for real like anything yeah. he, he's pulling the meatloaf he would do anything. <laughs> he, he's gonna but, get that pussy that, one way or the other. There it is. See, we got TV pussy. We got TV pussy. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So that's Videodrome. Yeah. It was just weird, and it, it didn't was... amount to anything. I thought there was a sequel. I legitimately like immediately went to my phone. Is there a Videodrome Part Two? Electric Boogaloo, and there's not. I like the boogaloo adage. I'll tell you, honestly, I liked the movie. I liked it. It was weird. It was uh, thought-provoking. It was weird. There was a chest vagina and a flesh pistol. And it was fucking weird, guys. I liked it. Like, I won a bet with myself. I knew you'd enjoy that boy pussy. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh... I went completely opposite in the spectrum. I was intrigued at first, you know, coming in not knowing anything about this film. Uh, 
it started out with tits and, and fucking James Woods, so I was on board. I was like, all right, cool, this is going to be all right. And then it progressively got worse, and then it got me interested again, and then it went way off the rails in a bad way, and I was like, that, what the fuck was that? Yeah, it went and, off the rails, and when you expect the train to crash, it just cuts the credits. It just ended on such a downbeat. I'm probably never going to watch it again. Blah, whatever, meat gun. Yeah. Maybe I just have a soft spot for weird shit. I like weird shit. I've got this this heart of glass when it comes to weird shit. I see what you did there. That was Blondie, right? Yeah? Maybe that or heart, one of the two. Yeah. I, it, and that was Blondie. Okay, good. We can leave that in then. I'm also going to leave the explanation in the questions too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And if you or a loved one have experienced belly pussy, please leave a comment right down below the video. Make sure to smash that like and subscribe button, because we always need that kind of thing. You know. All of our social media is right down there in the description. And make sure you hit that bell for notifications so you know when we have another disgusting film like this brewing. Until next week, fellas. James Woods wants smut. James Woods gets front butt. James Woods... <laughs> <laughs> That's the movie.